What's up gearheads? We're out here today at Mining Ridge Armory to give you another review of a product that a lot of you have been excited about. Janik just released the TP9 Elite SC in the United States. So if you're curious what kind of tests we ran it through and how it performed and what our thoughts were, stick around. All right. Overall, we put this little little uh, little beauty through quite a few different tests uh, when we were doing the review for it and the review criteria. But I want to start out with giving you kind of an unboxing and a general overview of what's included, what our initial thoughts were out of the box before we'd even pulled the trigger, uh, a, a thought process of what some of our uh, a run through of what the test criteria was going to be, the types of ammo we were going to use, and what the thoughts were. Just kind of a general overview, uh, and then we'll go from there. So for starters, the box itself does have transportation lock points and it feels solid enough to where it would, I mean, it's got a little give. You can see it squishes. It's not, it's not a Pelican case by any stretch of the imagination, but it looks like it would probably pass TSA standards if you locked it up with one or two locks and put it inside of another um, locked piece of luggage for checked luggage. It would probably pass through the TSA inspection, so should be good if you want to reuse the box for that. So inside of it, the foam, there's a foam piece between the lid and the main body of the, the case. Inside the lid, you've got a bore brush, a patch rod, to push through. You've got your owner's manual, a product registration form for the TP9 SC owner's manual. Probably a good idea to read that for sure, particularly if you've never owned a, a, a Janik before. Janiks are unique in a couple of areas like this, for example. On the Elite model and a few of the others, the slide doesn't come all the way forward. You have to pull it about a half, about one inch forward and then up. So that's something interesting or a good point to remember when we go to disassemble it here in just a minute. But that's what you got in the lid. All right, let's see. Down in the main compartment, you've got Century Arms, NRA, join the NRA membership, okay? We're gonna put that to the side. You've got an extended magazine that looks to be 15. So you got 15 rounds there. There's a 15, it's marked. That looks like a Metgar magazine. It's metal, okay? You've got what looks like a good positive grip area there at the bottom of the magazine as well as the stippling on the front there. So that should provide a good grip. We'll try that here in just a second. You've got a safety lock because you have to lock that trigger up for, for the safety of your children. In some states, that's actually a legal requirement. You do have that. There are storage protection of minor laws. Over here, we've got what looks like a spacer or adapter plate for the, the micro dot um, cutout. We'll, we'll see how that plays out here in just a minute. You've got, as you're used to with the Elites and a lot of the other Janik guns, you've got the extra back straps so that you can adjust for the size of your hand. You pretty much just knock out that little punch hole, uh, use a pin punch or a, a punch set and knock out that. Swap this out, change it out, pretty easy. You've got what looks like a flat base plate because you'll see when we get this out that there's actually a, uh, a, a pinky rest on the 12 round magazine that comes with it and there's also a flat plate. So that gives you, so you've got looks like right out of the box you've got three carry options available to you. You've got the potential for a reload, larger 15 round magazine capacity, you've got a pinky rest on the 12 round magazine that comes with it, and you've got a flat option. So it's, it's according to whatever your carry style is and, and how much printing you're worrying about doing, you, you're going to have, you'll be able to adapt or adjust. So as I mentioned, there's a, a, a RMR, or it's not an RMR, it's a micro red dot cutout on the slide of this pistol. So you see that all the necessary tools and accoutrement come with it to be able to do the adaptation. Just like with most of the other Janics, 
you've got the, the necessary Allen wrenches, the star, the screws, lock washers, or spa uh, pressure washers actually, uh, and extra pins, that kind of thing. All little accessories and, and doodads you would need right in the box. Love that. Love that, that Janik does that right out of the box. Kudos to them for that. Okay, so I can already see something that I'm going to consider a con. I mean, maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe they'll make a liar out of me. I promise you I'll give you an honest assessment of this, but I can already see not a fan of that holster, okay? Not at all. Now, I do want to, I will, I do want to say this, though, before I start saying anything negative. I will test this. I will give it a run. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a competition tomorrow. That's, it's just got a lot of movement in it. It's very, it's injection molded. That's not really good quality uh, pressed Kydex. That's some kind of injection molding probably going on. Um, I'll give it a test. I'll give it an honest assessment and I'll give it a try. I'll see, you know, I'll see how it holds up to, to a, a true run and gun situation and, and uh, you know, high pressure or whatever. We'll see. But I can already tell you right out of the gates, that is very, very flimsy, very thin. Oh, I may have just broke something. I could see how that would very easily so make a run up beside you and just grab your gun and pull and break this, hol this uh, holster off very easily. Now, all that said, though, again, I will give it a chance. I will give it an honest assessment and an honest chance. I'm not too optimistic. Oh, yeah, look at that. The way that little bolt right there pops and stuff. That's your tension adjuster right there. That's where you adjust the tension from where it holds, and I can already see that's kind of janky. That is janky. That's some cringy. Okay. All right, I'll shut up. I'll get off my soapbox. All right, so basically, point is, I will give this a chance. I will give it a chance. I really will, and I'll let you know an honest assessment of how it holds up at a run and gun. Uh, like I said, I got one tomorrow. That all said, though, I will say I, I do like the fact that Janik includes a holster right out of the box, so it does give you an option to carry it and go ahead and start carrying literally right out of the box. Um, yep, right out of the box. And it it's right-handed only, so that's a disadvantage. I mean, you can only only right-handed shooters can carry this. It looks like you might can reverse these clips. God, those are thin. You can probably reverse those and put them on the other side and do an IWB configuration instead of an OWV configuration. So this is... Better than their old holster by a mile. Their old holster, everybody knows, had that little surface style release right here. It, it wobbled and was very loose and jiggly on the inside, which caused the Cerakote and wearing uh, unnatural, unnatural and, and early wear on it. So this is a little better than their old one, but I am not initially pleased with this at all. Not even a little bit. Okay. Like I said, it's better than nothing, and it's something to get out of the box. You know, once you've spent the money to buy the gun, you are going to need to save up to get a good holster and that kind of thing. Okay, so we'll we'll give it a test and see. All right, so let's take this piece of paper off. You don't need that. You don't need that either. Let's get rid of that. All right, let's get rid of the chamber flag that comes with it. All right, so there she is. There is the TP9 Elite SC from Century Arms, Janik. I can see a couple things right out of the gates that are different. I can see that the stippling here is a little different than my daily carry, which is the Elite. Well, you can't tell it much because I've got the uh, the um, talon grips over it or whatever. You can't tell that a lot, but but there is a, a difference in the texture there. The Eagle is distinct, distinctly changed. There's a Janik word text there now instead of the Eagle or the... Uh, Griffin or whatever that is. That's changed. Obviously you can see the overall length of it and width is a little different than the Elite. The width looks pretty close to the same. The overall length though looks definitely different. They've definitely changed the profile there. That might actually fit some of the older holsters that I already have. We're going to try that here in just a second. Um, yeah. So, as I mentioned before, it's got your, your uh, loaded chamber indicator, your striker readiness indicator on the back, just like the old school. It's got the talon, or it's got the uh, blacked out rear sight and the dot front sight. 
Now, something I want to point out on this, and I won't be able to capture it on video, is that I've been told, let's see. Yeah, I've been told that this is a painted on tritium style material, that it does actually, the front dot does actually glow in, in the dark uh, for pickup in, in low light situations, but that it is painted on, it is not a tritium insert. Okay, now that said though, with a blacked out rear sight and a tritium, you know, tritium dot on the front, it's going to be hard to pick up that rear sight in relation to the front sight in a low light situation. So I have to test that out and run that and see how it goes. Something else I want to check real quick in relation to my, I want to see the rail. Yeah, okay. So, so definitely the Picatinny rail is significantly shorter. Now I had noticed in some of the, the, the advertising material, yeah, and the profile, the profile of the gun from the front of the trigger guard out is significantly different. You got only two instead of three for the Picatinny rail attachment points. You've got a more rounded front end. I'm gonna have to dremel that a little bit. All right. Yep, the front profile of it's a little different. Okay, which I guess has to be expected as you you lower the size of it. Um, all right. So let's see how this fits on there. It's very possible that once I adjust this back, it'll fit in my old holster. Let's give it a try real quick. Just, just for those of you out there who have went through the effort of getting a, a holster that, that fits the way you carry and that's exactly what you need and you don't want to have to change it up or resell it or whatever. Let's see. Now this holster I run on appendix carry with my... Okay, I can tell right off the bat that sits a little weird. Let's move that forward. There we go. All right, now let's see if it fits an old existing holster. This is an R&R &R holster. There's a company called R&R &R Holsters on Amazon. It's a pretty reasonably priced holster. I'm not gonna, gonna say that it's the most solid holster I've ever had in my life, and I absolutely had to do a bunch of machining to this thing. I had to change out the, the clips to get it to fit the way I carry. I had to do a bunch of dremel work on the side for where it was rubbing my fingers and stuff. I had to pull down some of the, the sweat guard, had to chop off some of the edges. I mean, it's very rough machining work. R&R um, &R holsters definitely needs to do a little bit of quality control and actually get out and run their holsters before they, before they actually sell this product. However, they're one of the few companies out there that will do a Janik pistol with a, an Olight PL2 Mini Valkyrie, which is what I carry. So let's see how this fits. I'm learning this as you learn it on Mm. So, it holds by the light, okay, regardless of which pistol I'm using. So, I'm not getting that good solid positive click and retention that I get with my Elite, my full size Elite with this. It's still holding though, and it's coming out decently to the end. I, 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 would, I would guess, I'm going to have to cut down the sweat guard if I decide to try to reuse this holster. I would very strongly guess that this holster will continue to work and carry, I'll be able to carry it with this subcompact. The grip is a little different. It's getting my finger closer up into the, to the push bar. Okay. All right, anyways, so enough said. So I guess that kind of answers a question for some of you out there who may be wondering. It is, it is likely that your SC is going to almost fit or come close to fitting but not exactly maybe a little little bit wiggly your elite holsters and again it's because of that difference in the in the distance from the front of the trigger guard to the front of the rail so let's talk real quick about grip so that's the grip for the pinky grip and i've got you know where a a, a, a medium to large size glove see where that fits in my hand Let's try the 15 rounder. Okay. I like the way that feels. That feels really good. That's probably the way I'll run it for, for a lot of the videos I'm testing. I don't like this. I can already tell you that's going to be a con for me because of that little, that's going to cause a little bit of problems. And I can feel a definite, just like you have with any other subcompacts, you've got that definite where your hand falls off the bottom. Uh, but other than that, it feels pretty much exactly like my Elite. All right, just curious. No way, surely not. Just curious. Well, oh, I thought. Okay, well, so there's your answer to that one. So the, the 15 round that comes with the subcompact will not fit in the Elites or any of the other TP9 series. So let's try to break it down real quick. 
let's test the disassembly of it. So, it's a little stiff, but up and off, just like the Elite. Looks like there's some oil and lubrication in there from the factory. You can see a little glistening. Plastic guide rod with a steel tip. Little notches in there, it's a little different. Plastic guide rod. And there's your little over three inch barrel there. Nine by 19, okay. Cerakote finish, your standard gray tungsten Cerakote finish that most of the Elite Series has already. Let's see if we can put this together without messing up too bad. Okay, function check. All right, looks good. So disassembly is pretty much identical to Pretty much identical to the Elite. All right, so, oh my goodness. Now let's test the trigger pull on it. All right, one of the things that I absolutely love the most about the Janik line of pistols is the buttery smooth trigger that has a very reasonable out of the box pull weight. So let's see how the new Elite SC stacks up. Now, Uh, 5.3, 5.2, 5.49, Five point zero. I'm trying to pull as close to the bottom of the trigger shoe as I can with these. Five point one. Okay, so consistently I'm getting between five point zero and five point four. It looks like. So I'm going to go with you know somewhere around five point two is what it's going to be listed or what it's going to come out to straight out of the box. And again, I have no doubt in my mind after I've run this thing. I'm giving it a fluff and buff and a break in. I need to quit that because I'm actually altering my test results by doing that. Um, no doubt that's going to actually do a, a, a come down to probably about in the mid four range if I had to guess. We'll see. So just a real quick side note about the holster. I want to get this on camera. Good positive retention click, right? But... That is very, 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 very wiggly. All right, so some of the things I didn't talk about when we were doing the unboxing and, and the, the run through, and you have to forgive me, I have to look at some of the notes so I can try to remember all this stuff, is we didn't talk about the barrel length and the overall length and the weight and that kind of thing as I was going through the unboxing and showing you what everything, uh, my initial thoughts and what everything was in the box. So real quick, so the, the barrel is a 3.6 inch barrel and that does actually come into play in some of the videos I'll be showing you when we were running some ammo through it, shooting it at longer distances. So be sure to keep an eye out for that a little later on in this video. Uh, the overall length of it this way is 6.7 inches and the height is a 4.6 inch, width is a 1.45 inch uh, and then Basically, the weight of it is 24.78 ounces unloaded. So it is um, about a pound and a half unloaded, something like that. And that's, of course, without my optic or without my lighter or anything else on it. All right, so we went through a bunch of the, the information about the pistol as we were doing the unboxing there. And I walked you through a bunch of the features of, of, of the pistol as relates to my initial thoughts coming out of the box. But I want to take just a second and read off from the website some of the, the sales points and sales pitch points that they have and talk about those individually. And we'll, we'll blaze through that real quick to get to the, to the good stuff. 
So on the website, they talk about the MSR or they list the MSRP is $429. Um, now, you know as well as I do, you're going to be able to get that for under, four, under $400 at your local dealer in most cases. That MSRP is always worst case scenario. Um, so another couple of things they talk about are the interchangeable back straps like we talked about, the uh, blacked out rear sight and the phosphorus front sight. Okay, And we're going to talk more about that here in just a minute. You know, I already showed it a little bit on the unboxing portion of the video. Uh, we're going to talk about that in my thoughts here in just a minute. The micro red dot interface, uh, along with the ability to, to co-witness, that's really nice. The fact that it co-witnesses is next level for sure, you know, that you can slide that out and, and still co-witness your red dot. Uh, the uh, reversible magazine release is good for you lefties. The standard integrated Picatinny, you know, standard 1913 mil spec. Picatinny rail, the tungsten Cerakote over nitride finish slide. So you've got a coating, a good color coating over top of a good quality coating to protect the slide and protect the metal. That's awesome. You know, a nitride coated uh, match grade nitride coated barrel so that you've got that, that performance and longevity. Uh, and that length of barrel does come into play a little bit. Um, the small parts and components container, uh, the two magazines, and the toolbox and the uh, all the accessories that come with it so out of the box you get pretty much everything you need and and this thing is just, just it's an amazing value seriously if nothing else it's an amazing value okay gearheads so we're out here let's put it through the ringers so i've got the janik tp9 elite sc here and we're going to run it through some different kinds of ammo some different magazines we're going to get kind of going to give it that initial out of the box um performance test and see, you know, first shots, first feel, see what, we're, what we think about it. Um, like I mentioned earlier in, in the video, I'm going straight out of the box. I haven't cleaned it. I haven't done any kind of break in, any kind of fluff and buff. I've done nothing to it. Straight out of the box. No lubrication, nothing. So I'm going to see how this is going to respond. Another thing to note, I want to note that the first thing I'm going to shoot through it is the Fioki 115 grain, 9 millimeter, 1200 feet per second just kind of bulk ammo and the reason I'm doing that is because the reason I want to start with 115 grain and work my way up through some of the Agia ammunition, Syntec, some Sig Sauer, some hollow points, things like that uh, in different magazine configurations. The reason is is because those of you who own the Janik T, uh, the SFX know that there's been this big debate online of, of European ammunition versus American ammunition since it's a, a Turkish made gun where you have to fire two, 200 rounds of 124 grain through it to get the break-in period done and then it just works perfectly and flawlessly. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not um, but we're going to start with 115 grain Fiocchi ammo and we're going to just see what it does. So maybe there's some truth to it, maybe not. Let's find out. So I've got nothing in here, and I'm breaking the rules. Don't you tell Janik, okay? Don't tell him. Do not tell Janik, but I'm going to leave that sticker on. It plainly says, remove before firing. Don't tell him. I don't want to go to jail, bro. I'm just, I'm just saying. I got, I mean, I'm, I'm sensitive. I can't, I just can't. But seriously, though. Fiocchi, 115 grain, straight ball ammo, the 12 round magazine. First shot, first feel, here we go. First shot jammed. Okay, that was a failure to extract. No, I lied to you. I lied to you completely. That did extract. That next round was a live round. Don't try that at home, by the way. That next one was a live round. It tried to feed. It, it angled up and did not get the correct feed angle. So we're going to try it again. 115 grain, Fiocchi. That shot hit low right, by the way. That one hit low center. Dead center. Dead center, dead center, dead center, dead center, dead center. Nice. And these things are grouping incredibly. Okay, so that's 12. All right, look at that. Now, I don't know if that's a break in period, but you, I'm going to have to rip and strip the magazine there to get it out. Smack on smack on tap. It actually dropped the slide, okay? 
So that magazine, I don't know if that's just where it needs some, some dry lubrication, if it just needs to be cleaned, or if that's a breaking period for the magazine, I can't say, but that magazine did not drop free on its own. Had to pull it. Fifteen rounder didn't drop free either. Had to strip and clip, strip and rip. All right, so the 115 grain did work. Uh, you, I just went through 27 shots of it right out of the box, straight in. I had that one failure right there at the very beginning. That barrel's warm. Um, I, I don't, I don't have an opinion on that yet. But you saw that the 115 grain worked through 27 sh pretty good shots. Um, grouping on it so far is incredibly accurate for this little short barrel. That's very, very, very good grouping. Granted, I'm on probably only about 30 feet or something like that from the larger targets, the silhouette targets, and maybe 35 to 40 feet from that small one down there at the end, but the grouping and accuracy on this thing's incredible. All right, there you go. I removed the tags and the stickers, so now don't be mad at me. All right, next I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something a little weird. I'm gonna try a heavier grade ammunition, uh, like maybe the Agia ammunition, 124 grain, uh, just ball ammo. And I'm going to try something weird. I'm going to try the stock 15 round Metgar magazine that comes with a TP9 Elite. And you can see how that's going to fit it. It's going to hang down to where my finger is going to fit in that little groove. But I'm just curious if that's going to feed. Uh, if it doesn't, and if that 15 rounder doesn't work like it's supposed to, we'll change back. Let's just give it a try. Okay, so I decided to go with 115 grain in the uh, Agia. 9 millimeter full metal jacket instead. So we're going with just another 115 grain, only it's a different brand. Uh, and we'll see how that pans out. Now again, remember this is the 15 round stock Metgar magazine that feeds the, the Elite. So this isn't the right magazine. This isn't naturally a magazine that comes with this pistol, the SC. So we're gonna give it a try though. We're gonna do 10 shots of 115 grain. See what happens, baby. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It does just what it's supposed to do singing. Doesn't matter what you feed it. Good job, Janik. Okay. Well, you saw it right there. Not even a native magazine. Janik magazine, Metgar, worked just like it was supposed to. Exactly. So now let's try, heck, let's just keep going. Let's try the native 18 round magazine, the Metgar magazine that fits the, um, the largers, the, the DAs and the, uh, the full size TP9 pistol series. Let's try that and some other kind of ammo. Boom. Um, so now I'm going to try, like I said, the native 18 round full size TP magazine, TP9, uh, with some Syntec action pistol, 9 millimeter, 150 grain TSGJ, total synthetic jacket technology. You know, we're going to try a little bit of this. Now that's 150 grain. That's going to be pretty hard hitting, but it's designed specifically for uh, competition shooting so that it doesn't have a lot of splashback from um, steel. So. See how that works. And again, not the right magazine for the pistol. Let's see if we can tear it up. Got a feeling it ain't gonna happen though. I got a feeling Janix thought this stuff through. Yep. Perfect. Nine shots, right straight through, 150 grain. What next? Let's go with the, uh, ooh, let's go with the native 15, 15 plus two that comes with the, uh, with the TP9 Elite. So we've already tried the 15, but we didn't try the plus two. They use basically, from what I understand, the Metgar uses the exact same spring inside the 15 and the 15 plus two. So that does reduce the amount of, of uh, upward force and pressure on the, the feeder plate, the feed ramp. Um, so let's see what happens, the follower. Let's see what happens. But anyways, so we're gonna run some Agia nine millimeter jacketed hollow point. We're gonna try to start switching over to some more interesting and self-defense ammo to see how that feeds up. All right. Oh, that's just, look at that, isn't that cute? The way that fits and just hangs down a little bit there. Okay, all right, enough playing. All right, let's get to work. I finally missed one. And again, side note, look, that's not dropping free. So the, even the plus two extra weighted 
base plate doesn't drop free on its own. I'm having to rip. Um, at this point, I'm leaning towards that's probably an issue with the mag well, that it needs to be cleaned or it needs a break-in period. I see that there are two ridges. I'll try to get that on camera or something. There are two ridges on this side and on this side that go in. Maybe those ridges need a little break-in or a little dry lube. I'm not sure. I don't like to lube my magazine wells. That's always a bad idea. Um, but no magazine is dropping free on its own. Does, none of them. So that's a, a rip. Okay, so that, that's a con. I'm not gonna lie to you before I can even get to the pros and cons. Now, again, that's out of the box though. So to be fair to Janik and to be fair to all those of you out there who are watching this, that may change as I run more magazines through it. That may, there may be a break in, it may be cleaning, it may be something else that's required for that to happen. So don't just automatically assume, you know, your mileage may vary, but that's something to note though. Okay, now we're gonna try the SFX 18 round plus two, and I've only got like seven, seven, eight rounds, something like that of the ammunition because we're starting to get some expensive ammo, more and more expensive every time we're going along here. This is the ARX nine millimeter Luger next generation defense Inceptor ammo. Uh, it is a 65 grain, 1650 feet per second, 65 grain in an SFX magazine with the plus two, which again, like we just talked about, same spring as the, the eight standard 18 round, but with a, with a base plate extension, which then means that the follower is under a different level of tension upwards as the standard 18 round. So let's see how this performs. All right, here we go. Ate it right up. Let's see if it drops free. So I have to rip. Okay, so I'm gonna quit playing around with all the different strange magazines, go back to the factory default magazines, start switching up some ammo a little bit and see how, how, she, how she does. All right, enough goofing around with the weird magazines. Let's get back to business as usual. So I'm gonna run the 12 round native magazine or the smaller magazine. And I apologize, I don't have the box for this one, so I don't know what grain it is, but it's the Spear uh, Plus P Luger Jacketed Hollow Point. Uh, and then in the 15 rounder, I'm gonna do a 10 shots there and I'm gonna do a magazine change and put in some of the Elite Performance Ammunition from SIG, the V-Crown, uh, about 10 shots of 124 grain, V-Crown jacketed hollow point, uh, 1165 feet per second, 443 pounds, foot pounds. Let's see how this plays out. Okay. I had a problem there. That last shot, there was what felt like a, a little jiggle where it didn't go into, it felt like it stopped, the, the slide didn't go all the way up into battery. So let's look and see what we got. The loaded chamber indicator is showing that it's loaded. It's stripped out of a, an actual live round. The live round does not have a primer strike. Again, that was the spear plus P, nine millimeter jacketed hollow point. The slide did not go all the way back up into battery. And I noticed also when I slammed it just now, it, the slide didn't close. So it did earlier and it did not this time. So let's see what happens. It just did it again. Okay, so the, the slide is not going back up into battery on these rounds. All right, let's... Uh, Let's finish out the two. All right, so I don't know what that is. So let's go with the Sig Sauer ammunition. Missed. Did it again, right there. It just did that little jiggle push forward Loaded chamber showing loaded. There was a live round with no primer strike in there. That was the Sig Sauer 124 grain V crown. Yep. So at this point, I'm leaning towards maybe the thing needs to be cleaned. Cleaned and lubed. Maybe. Ah, oh, missed again. Okay, so we're gonna go with some uh, Defender ammunition, competition series, designed for competition shooters. 
nine millimeter, 124 grain uh, plated flat nose, remanufactured actually, which means reloaded. So, and so Magia 147 grain full metal jacket flat point. So we'll start with 10 of the Defender uh, and then we'll do a mag change. It'll be, the 10 will be in the native 12 round magazine with the, the thumb pinky extension. And then the Agia will be in the 15 round after we do a mag change. All right, so here we go. It ate it. Again, magazine doesn't drop free. You got a rip. Interesting. Interesting. So it ate both of the flat nose flawlessly. All right, so let's talk about concealability. So you can see I'm relatively average sized guy. Okay. Um, and this is, this is a uh, holster from r and Holster like we talked about when I was doing the unboxing. And again, as I mentioned in the unboxing, I've had to do a bunch of modifications to this, to this holster. Uh, even more modifications, even further beyond what I'd already done for my Elite to get this thing to work. Um, but again, you know, this, uh, I've been talking to Shane at Smoky Mountain Concealment. Um, they specialize in Janik holsters. Um, and so I'm hoping to be able to get something a little, a little better, a little more of a, an exact precise fit, uh, to, to do some testing for you a little later on down the road. But as of right now, this is what I'm running because I kind of have to, as you can see, I'm a, basically a relatively average size guy maybe a little on the chunky side with a tactical shelf on the front. Uh, but you can see even with a little hybrid, the out blue alpha hybrid belt, how it kind of pooches out a little bit there, how this thing is going to sit neatly and how close it's going to sit in, in my body. You can see that the line there. So as I untuck the shirt, there will be a slight bulge out in the front. And I do tend to carry appendix, uh, obviously. Um, the same would apply though, as you can see, if you can get an angle of the pitch there of, I don't know if this will come up on camera or not, but angle of the pitch of how much the, the tip's going to stick out there would be the same back here if you're carrying in the three or four o'clock position. And you can see that's pretty much how it all looks. The 15 round magazine, you know, as a spare mag on the side. So from a concealability perspective, this thing literally disappears. I mean, I can untuck even this t-shirt here. If I can do it without messing up my microphone too much. You can see that we untuck the t-shirt there and it pretty much just disappears. I mean, you can see that, that there's a, uh, you're really printing more. I'm printing more with the hybrid belt, the little tip of the belt, that blue alpha. I, I print more with it than I do with the gun itself. Okay. Let's run through some of the pros about the gun. First pro obviously is going to be the size, but I want to take a second and show you how it stacks up in relation to some of the other smaller form factor pistols out there on the market. So this is a Glock 42. Okay. I'm not going to get super scientific in this comparison. Just going to kind of give you a couple shots of roughly how it looks, how the size stacks up between the two. Okay. That's a Glock 42 with, with a strike industries extended mag plate or mag base. So that's kind of a bit deceiving. You know, without the without the mag base or without the extended mag, probably a little more accurate. Okay, All right. Then a Smith Wesson Shield nine millimeter first gen Gen one with a with a uh, TLR one or TLR six um, light laser combination. So you can kind of see there how how that how it stacks up there. I'm not going to just drag out every single pistol I've got. I'm just kind of giving you some general ideas of how this thing stacks up. And again, this, the, you know, the Janik has the magazine in while the shield doesn't. Um, a Taurus G2C. Okay. The G, the Gen 2 compact from Taurus. You kind of see an idea there of how it stacks up. Again, I'm not going to get into exact measurements and science or anything like that. I'm just giving you a general idea of how these things stack up in size, okay? Another 
Another positive about this is the recoil management. So I found when I was shooting it that, and, and at this point I've got probably, probably about 400 rounds through it, uh, that's all. So I haven't really given it a good solid thousand round break in yet, but I'm, I'm up to around 400. But so far what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is, even before I put the O-Light on to give it that extra weight on the front to, to, to kind of assist with the muzzle rise and even without changing out any of the, the recoil spring or anything like that, everything straight out of the box. This thing, it just, it had very manageable, very, very respectable, very good recoil management. I mean, it, it just literally, because of the weight of it on the front, you know, the, the follow-up shots were super quick. They didn't have that snap, that real quick jerky snap that you're used to with some of the smaller form factor single stacks. It just felt right. It felt like a medium to large size pistol. Uh, it felt like the larger TP9s, you know, in this small form factor. So the recoil, recoil management is definitely an advantage. The accuracy on this thing was incredible. Obviously another positive that we talked about in the unboxing portion and, and everybody talks about, it, it's just universally accepted and known, is that out of the box, the Janics have an amazingly crisp and crisp and amazing trigger. So you saw the, 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 the poundage test pulls that I gave it where it was coming in around five, probably about an average of about 5.2 right out of the box. Again, that's with no break in. Uh, and I know from experience with my SFX and my, my TP9 and my Elite that uh, SF Elite that they do get better with age. They, they start breaking in, you start wearing off some of those machining burrs, they just get better with age. But they're amazing right out of the box for those of you who don't plan on putting a few thousand rounds through it. But you know, that, that 5.2 pound trigger pull, that amazing feel of the rearward. And so let's see if we can get this on camera of where it comes in and breaks. So you got take up, there's the wall, and the wall just feels, it's, it's, like, it's almost like it's not there, but it's there, but you can feel it. You know, so you've got take up, take up, and there's that wall. It's, it's there, but you, you almost can't feel it. And then that break, and the, the over travel is irrelevant because it, it you can see that it stops right there. And then the reset, it's right there. It's just amazing. Now I have already seen, okay, side points. Those of you who, who, um, who are into aftermarket triggers and aftermarket parts and so on and so forth, I have already seen posted out on some of the forums where people are running the Freedom Smith trigger, the racer series and the competition series and all that kind of stuff, that they've replaced it with the, the aluminum Freedom Smith trigger shoe. Um, and it appears to be working for people out there uh, uh, on, in, in, on the interwebs. Um, so not suggesting for you to do that. I'm just saying for those of you who are wondering, Apparently that does. Now let's talk about a few cons. This isn't all, all rainbows and unicorns. There are actually some things that I have some concerns about with this firearm. Let's talk about the ammunition. So you saw from the videos where I was running through all the different types of ammunition and the different ways that they, they worked and ran through the gun. And I ran into a couple problems with some of the jacketed hollow points from the, some of the different brands. Now what you didn't see on camera, for those of you who are wondering and those of you who run it, I did test about 20 rounds of the Hornady Critical Duty with the red tip, you know, the plus P, uh, 135 grain, that kind of thing. Tested that off camera and it ate it like a dream. Um, but you saw very clearly and plainly that I had a couple different types of ammunition that would, would it wouldn't quite go back into battery. It's like it would, it would do this little jiggle step after it, it fired and it wouldn't, the firearm wouldn't go all the way back up into battery afterwards. Um, so I'm hesitant to call that a con. To be fair to Janik and, and those of you out there at Janik who may or may not be watching this, um, forgive me for this, but I'm hesitant to call that a con because everybody knows, or at least you should know if, you know, if you're ha worth half a salt in the firearms industry, um, or rather in shooting sports, that you are going to have an, an, you know, some ammunition preferences with, with most pistols on the market today. Okay, Now... So theoretically, you should be testing your carry ammunition. You're supposed to know that. Shame on you if you're not. You should be running it and testing it to begin with. So it should be a moot point for you. You should be able to run whatever you run and know that it's going to eat it. That said, some of the bigger brands, and I won't mention any of the names, you do have quite a few of the bigger brands and the bigger boys 
where it will literally eat anything you throw at it. There is no concerns with ammunition or whatever. Uh, I will also note that, again, I've only had about 400 rounds through this, right? So it is entirely possible that as through the break-in period and break-in time, that, that that will wear in and it'll eat all those different types of ammunition a little better. But I ran into two types of ammunition that I couldn't fire. All right, the final con I want to kind of touch on is, is another one I'm hesitant to talk about and hesitant to say negative. You know, I just mentioned the one about the ammunition and, and some of the other stuff. And to be honest, some of this is kind of nitpicking, to be frank, or, you know, it could be break-in period, it could be a bunch of things. But this one, this con in my mind is purely absolutely and 100% user specific. So this is a con for me, not necessarily for you or for anybody else buying the Janik TP9 Elite SC, okay? That I mispronounced and called it a tritium front sight when I was doing the unboxing portion. It's actually a phosphorus uh, painted on effectively front dot sight, okay? With the blacked out worn tactical style rear sight. Target acquisition with this type of, of uh, aperture is, is really quick. You know, I was able to pick up targets and, and be extremely accurate, you know, quick on the draw, consistent, so on and so forth. So the sight picture of black, white is, is amazing. It's great. My gripe is that it's a phosphorus front sight, which means it ain't never, ever, 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 ever going to glow in the dark because I carry it concealed in my crotch away from the sun. So kudos to Janik for thinking through and putting that, that good of a quality of sight on it. Good job, amazing. I wish more companies would get their heads out of their rears and understand that we, the end user, just paid $400 for your gun we ain't got another 120 drop on some optics. Go ahead and negotiate those deals with whoever, whether it be excess sight systems for the big dots or whether it be, you know, Ameriglow for their, their tritium, whatever. Negotiate that ahead of time and put it in the box for us because we need that. If this is going to be a truly defense gun, everybody needs that low light, that glow, okay? So this is for me and me only. That's going to go. Um, bright side is, of course, you know, like we talked about, this is a Smith & Wesson style dovetail groove. I will be able to push that out and put, you know, something in there. I'm not decided yet what I'm going to put, so I'm not going to endorse or shield for anybody just yet, but I am going to change out those sites. Again, that's just for me. Now, your mileage may vary. If you're going to have this laying out on the, on the, uh, somewhere where it picks up enough sun to where it charges and glows, good on you, okay? But I don't, I won't, it's, it's useless. All right, so bottom line. Would I buy the Janik TP9 Elite SC? Would I trust my life to it? Would I trust my family's life to it? Would I own it? Would I tell you, the end user and consumer, to purchase it? Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I did buy this. This wasn't something that Janik sent me. Um, I'm not shilling for them. Um, I am kind of a Janik fan, you know, I will admit that because of the fact that I've had several of their pistols and I've had a lot of good luck with them and I'm amazingly impressed with their overall business model and the way that they're growing and the direction they're going, the fact that they're a sleeper company that I'm hoping in the next few years will actually pick up and become a lot more mainstream. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I literally did buy this uh, and I will not be, I will not be selling this one. I will, I will do my little redneck fluff and buff. I will uh, stroke it about a thousand times. I'll play with the springs, so on and so forth, and I'll end up keeping this one and putting it in my rotation. And as a matter of fact, I, I very thorough, I have been carrying it for the past few days since I got it. I've, I have trusted my life to it for the past few days already because I am confident in the amount of rounds I have put through it and the type of ammunition that I'm running through it, that Hornady critical duty, that it's going to do what I need it to do, uh, except for the whole glowing in the dark front sight thing, and I've got this to, to compensate for that. So would I buy it? Absolutely. Would I trust my life to it? Absolutely, and have been trusting my life to it. Would I trust my family's life to it? Absolutely. I mean, I, I already am literally trusting my family's life to it, and my wife has already shot it along with her Taurus G2C, and she's already impressed with it. She's already happy with it. There's already a couple family members of hers that's wanting me to try to get them one um, so that they can carry some of the females in the family. Um, she's able to, even with uh, a... A, some health issues in her shoulder, she's able to, to articulate the slide. And so I trust it. My wife trusts it. I spent my money on it. 
For whatever that's worth, that's my final thoughts and my opinion on the Janik TP9 Elite SC. Go out and get you one. You can't go wrong under $400 for all the, the amazing value and amazing benefits and amazing um, features that this gun has. This thing is just feature pack, I swear. I'm loving it. I'm digging it, man. I really am. So until we see you out on the range, you keep living your dream. Thank you.